Hi, it's Teardown Time. We're going to take a look at this Aneg AC11 socket tester. Now, we've seen uh, Aneg before and they rebadge a bunch of um, other companies' uh, products, so I haven't looked of who originally uh, manufactures this. But it's a main socket tester. It's got an Aussie plug, none of that Yankee or European uh, rubbish. And it's one of these whiz-bang fancy ones and it's also got non-contact voltage tester as well. So let's power this thing on and ta-da! And you'll notice it has... this actually shows up better on camera <laughs> than it does in real life. In real life this is really faded and washed out orange. It reminds me of the like really crappy gas plasma displays in like the late 80s early 90s I think uh, Toshiba used to make them on the Toshiba laptops but uh, it just it looks very sickly and washed out anyway um main soccer testers are very interesting this is a fancy pantsy one and here is your more traditional very simple one I've had this for at least 30 years. So I'm actually going to tear this one <laughs> apart. Yeah, they've got three indicators here. You don't need any power like you do with this one. This one's uh, battery powered here, fancy pantsy. I wouldn't rely on a battery powered socket tester. Anyway, th the whole idea of these things is that they're designed to test the wiring of your mains wiring and tell you if it's correct, to tell you if you've swapped active and neutral or active and earth or something like that, or you're missing an earth or uh, something like that. So yeah, these soccer testers, very handy um, to have one. You should should have one. And I built one of these when I was a kid. So inside one of these is very simple. They're just basically a diode in series with an LED here and a series uh, dropper resistor. In this case, I think this one might be uh, a neon bulb instead of an LED, but um, yeah, the new ones are lead. Yeah, it's just got one between there, one between there, and one between there in a triangle shape like that. And that gives you all these different things. So if your red and green lights come on, then it's okay. And if just the green light comes on, it's no. Neutral um, is unsafe, so you've got a broken neutral. And if the green and orange come on, um, active and earth have been re reversed. Unsafe, obviously. Um, and if just the orange is on, active on earth and earth not connected connected, unsafe, and then if orange and red are on, active on, earth short, or polarity reversed, unsafe, and if red's just on on its own, then you've got uh, just a missing earth connection on there. And these are really simple things. So anyway, um, I'll just crack this open quickly. <coughs> Tongue at the right angle, there you go. That was a bit easier than I thought. So let's have a squiz. And yep, I was right. There you go. <laughs> this is a neon bulb version like that. So this one, um, it just has dropper resistors and a neon bulb and that's it. Yeah, so this one is really crude, but <laughs> yeah, you're more modern ones. <laughs> more modern crude ones will have a uh, lead and diode in series. And this one is Kamigata. Yeah, um, that was probably just pulling that out and it's just broken off there but there's nothing in them really so we'll tear down this fancy pantsy one see what makes it tick obviously it's going to have a micro in there and it's going to have a non-contact voltage uh, tester circuit just like you've got like in your regular um, voltage detection uh, sticks or something like that so this will be really uh, fancy so if we have a look at a more modern uh, passive one like this uh, Fluke ST240 plus leave it in the comments if you want me to get this and uh, do a tear down it's basically the same thing it's got three indicators there it's got an RC the uh, test button, which uh, this one does as well, uh, which just puts a suitable resistor on uh, between active and earth, which then will trip uh, your 30 milliamp uh, earth leakage uh, circuit breaker or residual uh, current device, as RCD says. And once again, if you've got the two LEDs on, then it's correct. If you've got the earth fault, only one will be on. Neutral fault, the other LED will be on. And if they're all off, your lives are broken, or you've switched the power point off, or your circuit breaker's tripped, or uh, something like that. And the other two, which includes a red LED instead of a green one, I guess, are uh, live neutral uh, re reversed or live earth reversed. Now, what you won't notice is that uh, this, uh, these simple uh, testers like this, they can't test a uh, neutral earth swap because most modern main systems use the MEN system or multiple earth neutral system which means that the neutral is bonded to the uh, earth usually back at your fuse box in your house or something like that not sure how it works in a building like this I haven't actually checked 
my power board? Does it go all the way back down to the substation in the basement of the building or, or not? I'm not actually sure. Leave it in the comments down below if you're an industrial electrician. Anyway, uh, these simple devices, which include these ones, they cannot uh, detect an earth neutral swap, unfortunately. So that's one of the downsides. And there's tons of these available. Here's another Stanley uh, brand one. And it works in exactly the same way as that Fluke one. But this one actually tells you this unit will not deter detect Earth neutral reverse. There it is there. So, trap for young players. Anyway, let's go back to this Aining AC11. It's got uh, two AAA batteries in it, which powers it uh, here, as you can see. So, let's power that up again. And you can see all the indicators. And they've got another filter on that LCD to give you green like that. Um, so green is brighter than the orange here. But this one here actually tells you the mains voltage, i.e. line and neutral here. It also tells you the neutral earth voltage. So not only that neutral and earth is connected, but how well is it connected, i.e. what's the resistance of your neutral uh, earth, and it gives you the voltage here. So let's actually plug this in and try it out. Oh, sorry, I forgot to plug this old one in, but trust me, it just lights up red and uh, green. So here we go, let's plug it in, and da -da 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 -da, and it is correct. So it took a few seconds there, so obviously it's my, the micros uh, doing, doing the detection and stuff like that. And um, 245 volts here in the lab, that is normal. And, uh, oh, there you go, 0 0.7 to 1 volt neutral earth. But as I said, that'll depend on... Your, how your system's wired up. I'm in a big commercial building here, so if it's bonded right back down in the substation down in the basement, um, then, uh, yeah, it depends on all the other loads uh, in, that are on in the building, you'll get, you know, some sort of voltage drop there. So I don't know, is that good? I don't know. Industrial electricians with building experience down below? Sounds all right to me, though. And it does have that non-contact voltage tester, and it, it it works okay. Like, you know, it's good enough, but really, I like, if I was an electrician, I wouldn't have this, because I don't want to rely on something that has two um, AAA batteries in it, you know, that's battery-powered. I would want one of those smart passive ones. So anyway, let's take a look inside. So two AAA batteries. It's interesting that they... It looks like they've got a separate mounting plate for the sockets at the back with four screws in there and wires going over. That makes sense because, of course, you've got to sell this into many different countries. And I don't know how many... Does anyone know? I don't know off the top of my head how many different types of PowerPoint adapters there are. So have a squeeze down here. They've got some Celastic down there. That's not too shabby. And we have been blobbed there. So there you go. There's a chip on board and just the blob on top. So, unfortunately, we don't know what micro that is at all. Maybe you could tell from the pinout, because obviously um, the footprint here is designed for either a bare die on there, a chip on board, as they call it, cob, and then they just bond the wires over, or it's designed for a QFP package like that. There you go. So they've got some uh, test points up there. VPP, there you go. Pick, maybe. I don't know. No idea. Um, and so, yeah, obviously, they're the uh, programming uh, pins, and they would, uh, they'd have a pogo thing at the uh, factory to program that. And what's an ET6621? It's upside down. All the electrons are going to fall out. There you go. That's an E-Tech um, LCD controller. Nothing fancy going on there. Oh, it's got 32 by 4 bits of RAM there. And, yeah, that's just driving the LCD. So, obviously, um, they chose a micro that didn't have any... Uh, LCD driver in it. This has quite a few segments there. In fact, you can see that you get it at the right angle. You can see all the different off uh, segments, but you know, it's got two three digit uh, displays plus all the enunciators and uh, stuff like that. So, you know, it's got some requirements there. Okay, so what else have we got going on here? I may have to actually rip all this off if I want to try and reverse it somehow, but they've got a whole bunch of uh, 1206 resistors here. So these days, the only reason, you, pretty much the only reason you use uh, 12 larger 1206 packages like this, if you wanted higher power dissipation and or voltage uh, compliance in the voltage rating on them. Anyway, so it looks like this is, we've been mooned here, this is the switch. That would be the, yep, this is the RCD test uh, switch there. And as I said, all they're doing is whacking in a resistor there um, in series. So basically they've got a 10k resistor there uh, presumably the other end of that just goes down to earth so from live to earth and it's really not much else doing here at all we've got four trannies around here and 
Um, just some miscellaneous stuff up here for the micro and some caps here, but you know, there's not much going on. We've got a diode here. I'm not sure what that's doing because I don't know where these traces are buggering off to. So I might have to get this out. Anyway, there's our non-contact uh, voltage detection strip. So they've got that entire strip along that top edge like that is the antenna, effectively the antenna for picking up the um, electric field there. And that lead wire going over there, that's going over to the backlight for the LCD. So let's see if there's anything on the other side, but I'm doubting it. Okay, let's get that out of there. And no, as you'd expect, we've got a giant ass backlight there. Got our LCD, got a zebra strip, and Bob's your uncle. That's it. We just got one lead down there by the looks of it. And the power button's actually a soft button there. So it's um, on the, of course, on the battery side of things. But this one over here had to be a big clunking switch, even though it's surface mount uh, jobby, because that's directly on the mains, basically. So they've gone to a bit of effort there for the backlight. That's not too shabby at all to try and get an even backlight. Shame it's such a piss poor um, LCD. But so yeah, they've got like a different color uh, filter in there basically for um, and to give that green indicator for correct and uh, basically the orange um, for everything else. And there you go. You can see that. You can see the filters inside there. You can see most of it's orange, but there is a green part to that as well. So that's just um, like a filter masking, so to speak, inside the uh, LCD. So the word correct is across there, and that's how that one can show up green. Eh, neat, huh? But um, yeah, you can get your LCD manufacturers to do custom stuff like that for you. So although that kind of technique isn't hugely um, common, the LCD manufacturers, they'll do that for you. If you ask them, no worries whatsoever. There we go, we can see all our segments. Isn't that neat? So that's the bottom side of the board, I guess. And the top side here is, so uh, where is like traces like that? buggering off to like <laughs> clearance much <laughs> let's get this hot snot off so that we can see a bit better maybe trace out a couple of things all right i've done a quick reverse engineering the board here not 100 percent but good enough for australia it'll give us a great idea of what they're actually doing here now it wasn't particularly easy to find out what this ic here was but i might do a second channel video on that so, uh, so here's the top and the bottom here and i didn't have to uh, remove any components to what's going on here now i thought this was just a regular micro but aha uh -huh, it's not it's actually well here is the schematic they actually use a multimeter chip Set. It's an SD7500 here, and you might recognize this kind of arrangement because it's essentially a multimeter front end that's doing everything here. It's powered from three volt uh, batteries. It's got the uh, soft uh, power button there. It's got a couple of uh, transistors driving the backlight and the buzzer here, and it's got you sort of like traditional COM terminal on your multimeter chipset here and then your input voltage divider here which goes into your various usual multimeter architecture uh, multiplexes and stuff like that and your ADC. Curiously this one does actually have an in internal LCD driver but it's actually using that um, external uh, chip because it's got to drive sort of like custom segments or something. I don't know what's going on there and your RCD test up here is exactly what, oh Oh, I forgot to put the values on there. They're 1k6 each. Um, so yeah, let's get the confuser out. So we've got 240 volts divided by four 1.6Ks, that's 6400 skis. Um, we're getting uh, 37 and a half milliamps. And that's basically what you want because you're a regular RCDs trip at nominal 30 milliamps. Um, so yeah, that'll do the business. And they've got a reverse protection diode across there like that um, to protect the, and that's just an LED um, on the front, which lights up um, and Bob's your uncle. But yeah, um, you've got your input uh, protection resistor here, two five meg resistors in series. And of course, I mentioned you put multiple resistors in series to get the uh, clearance and the voltage uh, required. So they've done that three times here. They're actually 4.99 meg, but you know, five, five meg, good enough for Australia. And they've got a 10K down here on the earth. And the earth is directly connected through to the comm terminal here. And the neutral is in the middle. So that's interesting. So obviously in a correct configuration, when the active neutral at earth is uh, plugged in correctly, they've 
calibrated the software so that it measures whatever it measures on here. We're not going to go into details of exactly how it measures that with the multimeter chipset. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this video. The fact that, yeah, it makes sense to use a multimeter chipset here. And what about the non-contact uh, voltage testing? Well, I haven't done that here, but that's actually, let's go take a look at the data sheet over here. It's the SDIC SD7500, and it's an auto-ranging six-channel multimeter system on chip. So it's got all the LCD drivers, so it can actually drive, you know, one of those little cheapy $2 meters. You could actually use a chipset like this to actually do it. And it's only available in the one footprint here, but obviously you can get it as a bare die uh, from the company. In fact, can we go right down the bottom? Can you? They don't mention bare die, but pretty much any manufacturer will sell you a bare die if you ask them and you order sufficient volume. It makes sense to use a multimeter chipset. All the functionalities are uh, built in there. Why not? Anyway, we won't go into the internals D here, but uh, su suffice it to say that the COM terminal, which is connected through to Earth here, that is uh, the COM terminal here, and the battery connects to VDD and VSS. So the battery, as you saw on the schematic, so this is the ground, this is not Earth, this is the internal circuit uh, ground, and that's connected to the negative of the battery, but that's different from the COM. They're not actually electrically tied together, but that's common in multimeters. Huh, common? Get it? Here a week. But yeah, it's got all the stuff required for your regular uh, multimeter here, and it's got an internal voltage reference, of course, um, and it's got an 8-bit RISC um, MCU. What? actual RISC micro that is, it, maybe it's a, its own flavor. But here is a typical application circuit here. This would be your multimeter. So this is the common of your multimeter. This is your regular volts amps jack here. And here's your, you know, when obviously not using the uh, current input here, but you can see that the common terminal is connected to the pin 12, the COM of the uh, chip over here, which is different to the VDD and VSS. See how it's got uh, like a circuit ground over here is not and if you measure, go and check out your multimeter and look at other multimeter videos I've done, the COM is almost never connected to the VSS uh, battery over here. They're different. And you can see that it's got a non-contact voltage tester capability built in. So obviously, um, you know, it's got a two transistor uh, clamp over here. I'm not sure if that's what these uh, extra two transistors here doing. I didn't show those on my circuit, but that's the uh, backlight and the buzzer uh, driver here. So we've got an extra two transistors here. The non-contact tester's up the top there. It's got one meg, so there's obviously like a trace uh, going down, like it does here on the, yeah, it goes down here somewhere. I didn't bother to uh, trace that out, but that actually connects into pin eight here, and we do actually have already using pin eight here for our, um, basically this, this connection here, this voltage tap between the neutral and earth here. So I can de detect, you know, a broken earth or whatever. So this node, here, you can call it, is also connected to the non-contact voltage uh, terminal here. So that's what they just use pin 8 here. So there you go. Like, it's it's incredibly simple. <laughs> it's just like a, a regular multimeter uh, chipset. It's, it's smart. Um, if you want to make a device like this, like a smart device like this, yeah, it makes sense. A multimeter chipsets are already designed for this sort of stuff. You've already got your non-contact voltage thing. You get that for free. That's why they included it, even though it's a bit of a pointless wanky feature, but it's free. So why not include it? And that buzzer terminal, they do actually use pin 22 down here on the uh, design for the uh, buzzer. And then you've just got that those uh, programming pins, which we uh, saw before on those pads there. Hence, that's the VPP and these ones over here. And they must have another pad for ground and stuff like that before they sold, probably underneath the battery uh, terminal there. So, you know, pogo pins uh, to program this chip. Uh, once they've uh, soldered it, you wouldn't buy it from the manufacturer. You might buy bare die pre-programmed, maybe, but given that um, the pads are on here, it's more likely that they're just buying it blank, they're whacking on the board, and then they program it later. And then, of course, you can update grade the uh, firmware at the production uh, stage. It's not for user updating, of course, but uh, certainly if you want to do any bug fixes, you can do that later. So there you go. Just a multimeter chipset. Um, curiously, they didn't use the internal LCD driver, even though it's got it. Um, so some little small quirk meant they couldn't use it uh, for some reason, perhaps. There you go. I was expecting just a regular micro, but no. Now, now that I think about it, yeah, it does make sense to use a multimeter chipset in this application. So there you go. Hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below.
Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.